Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. We've got a fun project for you today. It is a free uh, pattern and tutorial for a double oven mitt. So we've got the instructions and the templates for this over on our website over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. I'm gonna be making it in this really cute fabric from Dear Stella and it coordinates really great. We've got the little gingerbread men and then we have some bias binding and then we also also have this fun plaid for the lining. We've got kits for this over on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. But if you're reading your stash or you wanna get something else, maybe you don't want holiday and you just want something for every day, you need a half yard of your main fabric, half yard of your lining, fat quarter will do it for your binding, and then a half yard each of batting and uh, the insole bright, which is a heat reflective substance. It looks like batting, but it's got needle punched aluminum on it. So that way you can use it and the heat will reflect back to the hot pan that you are grabbing with this. This is a super easy project. I made it from start to finish in an afternoon and it is really easy to do. So let's get started and plan to make up a bunch of these for holiday. We're gonna start early so you are actually done and can enjoy your Christmas Eve this year. So to make this project, you, of course, are going to need your template, which you can get on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Just download the double oven mitt pattern, and this, along with all the instructions, is in there. You're going to need a half yard of your outside fabric, a half yard of your lining fabric, a fat quarter for the binding, and just some batting scraps are just fine, and about a half yard of your insole bright. This is the special uh, material that will reflect heat, so it's good to use and pot holders or projects like this. You're gonna need a good pair of sharp scissors. We're gonna be cutting through a lot of layers, some pins, and binding clips are very helpful, but not super necessary. But if you've got them or you've been thinking about getting them, now's a good time. Some sort of marking tool and a bias tape maker. Um, I've got these ones from Purple Hobbies. You can also use them to make jelly roll rugs and they clamp onto your table. We have them in lots of colors and different sizes. The sizes indicate the width in here that will clamp onto your table. I will say it doesn't always clamp perfectly well, um, but uh, yeah, that doesn't really matter for today's project. And then also we have gonna use some spray mist. Um, I'm just using water in this, but starch is helpful as well. If you have a favorite starch or spray starch alternative that you use. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to layer our fabric up. There's a really specific way we need to do this so that the heat reflecting is going against the area where the hot pan is going to be. This is all written out in your instructions as well as I'm gonna show you right here and now. But for all the steps, both the pockets and then your main piece that's gonna be on the outside, you're going to follow this layering order. All right, so first I'm taking my lining fabric and I'm gonna flip that over so the wrong side is facing up. So if you think about the way it's gonna be when it's all done, this is kind of how we're arranging it. Now, the lining side is gonna be the side that is going to be touching the hot part. So we wanna make sure that we take our insole bright and we're gonna use the aluminum side, which is the shiny uh, gray side, silver side, and we're gonna lay that face down. So that shiny side is facing the wrong side of our lining fabric. Now I'm going to take my batting scrap and I'm gonna layer that next. There is a right and wrong side to batting. It doesn't matter so much in this one, but I'm having the right side facing my main fabric, which is now going to go face up. So in the end of it, what matters the most is that you've got your main fabric and your lining fabric facing to the outsides. And when you flip it over, you've got your silver side facing the wrong side of your lining. So that way, when we go to grab stuff in the oven like this, we had the heat reflecting back at the hot pan and not at us. So here's where the clips come in handy. We could pin all of this, but it's a whole lot easier to just clip my corners with these because you've got a lot of layers here. It's two layers of fabric plus two layers of thick batting and batting-like material. And so this is just a really easy way to keep everything together. 
Now I also am going to pin about halfway through on this pocket side because we're going to use our template on this next. And so I just want to make sure that there's something to hold all my layers together when I take that template and cut off my corners. So I'm just laying this so that the bottom is even with the bottom of my pocket. And I'm going to clip that in place. And then I'm also going to adjust the clips on the side so that way I am clipped through all the layers and I can help hold that template in place without having to poke holes in it and with a bunch of pins. Now I'm gonna take my friction gel pen. Any marking tool will work for this. Um, you just wouldn't wanna use like a real pen because that could bleed if you have to wash it. And let's face it, this is probably a project you're gonna have to wash at some point uh, because it's gonna get maybe a little dirty as you cook. But I'm just outlining where the edge of that template is. All right, now I can remove that template and I am keeping all my clips right where they were. So we're good there. So now I'm just going to cut along the lines that I marked to remove the outsides and create that nice curve. Now I'm making sure that I'm using the sharpest pair of scissors we have here because we are going through several layers at once. I don't want them to shift on me. And I am kind of just curving in a little bit here. But the reason why I like to clip them all together is if I were to line these up all individually, one, that's gonna take a lot of extra time, and two, I might be off just a smidge when I do that. And this way, I'm gonna at least have all of these layers be at the same point. And so that's gonna make your life a little bit easier when we go on to the next step. All right, so I can take the clips off of these and use them later. And what I'm gonna do next, I can toss those corners, is I'm just gonna stitch all the way around the outsides of this part with essentially a stay stitch. I'm gonna use my walking foot for this. You wanna use your walking foot anytime you're sewing more than two layers together. So quilting, sewing, binding, and in this case, making sure we're keeping all of our layers together for our pocket and our main piece. And that way, when we go to sew them together later and put binding strips on later, this will all be together and secured and we don't have to worry about it shifting and then we're missing bits and getting frustrated. So it's worth the extra step here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch probably like an eighth of an inch stitch all the way around the edge. You want it to be within the seam line so that when we add the binding later, it's gonna be covered up and you won't see it. So I know that when I stitch with the needle in the center position, I'm essentially sewing about a quarter inch stitch away from the edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my sewing machine needle over like to 6.0. Um, and that would be where I would sew it if it were a scant quarter inch on a regular quarter inch foot. That way I can line this up and I can just stitch in those corners. You can also increase your stitch length a little bit here because this is really just a basing stitch. We just wanna hold everything together so that way we're not fussing with it when we get to later steps. All right, so I have sewn all the way around and I flipped it over and I noticed that I missed a good chunk on the side here. I've got it all in the other areas real well, but I need to go through and I'm just gonna sew through from the other side and just make sure I'm catching that. It was just a little bit too close to the edge and it didn't work out. So this is why we do it at this point so that way everything is together and we don't just have to worry about it. All right, I've caught all my layers. I've got my first pocket all ready to go here. Um, I can also go across the top if I want, but I actually think I'm gonna need to square that off a bit, so I'm gonna skip that for now. Um, but if you wanted to quilt it, now is the time. I'm gonna leave mine unquilted because I really like the look of this print all on its own. And I'm just going to go around the rest of my pieces now. For the big long piece, I'm gonna go ahead and start right in the center because I've got a nice straight of grain here to work with and that way the layers will be less likely to shift on me as I go. The walking foot is what helps move all your layers together at the same pace so that way you're less likely to have that happen. But it still is happening a little bit to me so I'm just taking that extra precaution. All right, so I am about to get to the point where I started. I'm giving this a little bit of tension. I'm just giving a little bit of a tug here. And that will help if anything shifted a little bit. Make sure you don't end up with any pleats on the back side. All 
right, this is already looking super cute. We've got our big long piece. We're going to have our pockets, which will sit on the inside like this and just be super cute and adorable. Uh, but what we have to do next is prep our bias binding. And it has to be bias binding because it has to be able to work around these curves. So I'm gonna show you how to do that from a fat quarter. We're gonna be able to get about five yards of two and a half inch bias binding. And that way we can just go straight around these edges and get it attached. All right, so we're gonna make continuous bias binding. We're gonna be able to get about five yards from one fat quarter. So I've already got one straight side here, it looks like from when it was cut. This one came straight off the bolt. So it is nice and crooked over here. And this might be straight, we'll see. But I'm gonna use this as my straight edge. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna flip it around so that that straight edge is facing me. Then I'm gonna line any inch line of my ruler up with that straight edge and I'm gonna square it up. So I'm gonna scoot it over as far as I can go and I'm gonna take my rotary cutter. Oops, see, I have ruler slips too. It's usually whenever I don't stand up to cut, I don't have the same control. That's better. All right, so now I've got a nice right angle here and I just need to keep working my way around the fat quarter until I have right angles everywhere. All right, so I made it around all four sides. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a 45 degree angle out of here to create one large triangle, and then you're gonna have another triangle with a little bit extra on the side because this piece is not square. So a ruler has different lines on it. And we can see here that we've got a nice 45 degree line here. So I'm just gonna line my 45 degree line up with the bottom here and then bring it right into the corner. So I've got my 45 degree line going along here and then the edge of that ruler is even right with the corner. You can see I'm not gonna make it all the way across, but that's okay, I'll be able to make it a good chunk of the way. And now I can move this out of the way. Here's a fun tip. All you gotta do is flip that ruler around. You can add another 45 degree line here. And we can line that up at the top and then scooch it over until it's also in line with the edge here. And now we know that we're gonna have a nice straight line here to work with. All right, so now we have the triangle that we cut out. And then we, again, we have the triangle with a little bit extra on the side. And so what we're gonna do now is we're going to flip this right sides together. We're gonna take the straight edge here and we're just gonna lay it right sides together over here. Now this should be the same length at this point uh, because we squared everything up but I'm gonna go ahead and I normally don't pin anything um, if I can avoid it, but I'm gonna go ahead and pin at the front and back so that way those stay exactly even with each other as I sew this together. Now, ideally you would sew this with just your plain quarter inch foot. I'm gonna go ahead and sew with my walking foot because I don't feel like changing it out and I know that I can do just this little bit and have it be okay. But if you're not so sure about it, either prep your binding ahead of time so you don't have to switch feet in the middle of the project or just go ahead and uh, sew it like I am with your walking foot. There are some quilters who like swear by sewing with your walking foot for piecing. I am not one of them, but I will do it on occasion when I'm feeling too lazy to switch out my foot. All right, now we're gonna press this seam open. That'll help reduce bulk as we sew. And also, this is basically going to allow us, between this and the next step, will allow us to not have to sew all the tiny little strips together. We're just gonna be able to cut that entire five yards worth all at once. Now, whenever I press open, I like to do it from both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this to the other side. I'm also gonna give it a little spray just to help get that nice and flat. All right, so now we've got a parallelogram and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start measuring out two and a half inch widths and we're going to do that along the whole side and we're just gonna keep marking it. You don't wanna use something like your friction gel pen for this because we do need to press this eventually and that will get rid of the lines and we are gonna need those. So you do wanna use something that either isn't gonna go away with heat or just a pencil is perfect as well. So I'm just lining up two and a half inches with the bottom here. You can sure it's nice and straight across and then I'm just going to mark that with my pencil. I like to angle my pencil in toward the ruler 
because then it's more likely to be right on. If I'm going this way or definitely angling it this way, then I'm not gonna be right at two and a half inches and I'm gonna have strips that vary in width. All right, so it might be kind of hard to see on camera, but I've got my first line at two and a half here. So now I'm going to use that as my measurement going forward. So I'm gonna put two and a half inches now right on there and that is my new guide. So I'm gonna keep doing this until I've worked my way across the entire piece. All right, so this last bit is not two and a half inches. We're not gonna worry about that. Now this part is gonna seem weird when we get started. All right, so I've got my piece laid out here and I'm just gonna go ahead and lay these in. It makes a little bit more sense when you see it visually this way. So we can see that we have our lines are coming together and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see it even better. So I've marked the start of my lines with permanent marker. I've only done that so you guys can see a little better on camera, pencil's just fine for you at home. Now, if you are gonna line them up straight like this, you can see one with one, then what you're gonna have is you're going to have just strips that you come off. So what we wanna do is offset it by one. So so here's our first line and first line. We're gonna move it so that our second line is lining up with our first line. That will allow us to cut it off so that we have a coil instead. All right, so now you can see here's our first line, it's offset. And here is our first line with our second line here. So that way when we sew it together, we're gonna be able to start cutting with our scissors here and it will be one continuous loop and we won't have to do any more seams, which is fabulous. All right, so I'm just going to pick up these two and I'm just going to get them so they're going in the same direction. All right, so we want these to overlap just a smidge. So I'm going to eyeball about a quarter inch in and I'm just gonna poke through that first side right here. And I almost hit it on the back here, you can see. I'm, I'm just a little to the side of that. So I'm just gonna move it over just a smidge so that I can go through there. And then we're good to go. We can just go ahead and pin right there. So I'm gonna keep doing that, working my way down. We'll show it one more time. Again, I'm going in about a quarter inch away from the edge of that fabric. And then I'm trying to hit about a quarter inch away from the edge of the other one, still on that line that I drew. And that'll make sure that these lines are pretty close to each other. It's, it's binding, it's not the end of the world if it's not perfect, but we wanna be as accurate as we can. All right, now this last one isn't gonna match up with anything. This is going to be the end because this is not a full two and a half inches. Totally fine, we're gonna have plenty. All right, so this is looking a little strange at the moment. We're just gonna flip it down and we're just gonna sew down the side that we pinned and we're gonna be able to cut and just have a continuous strip. I'm still just gonna use my walking foot for this step. If you wanted to use your regular one, go right ahead and do that. Uh, you also could have just prepped this before you put your walking foot on, which is probably what I should have done, that I wanted to do all the steps in order for the video. All right, now when you lay this out, you should see that the lines are going straight across from one edge to the other. They are on mine, so that's great. So I'm just gonna start cutting on the edge here and just start making my way around. Actually, I think I'm gonna cut over here. This is the first full one. Uh, the other one is our waist at the end because it's not quite long enough. All right, I find it kind of cumbersome to press this first. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and just start cutting. And so I'm just gonna follow those lines and start working my way around and we're gonna have one big long strip come off. Coming to our first seam, I can see that it's going straight across here, which is great, that's exactly what we want. I'm just gonna cut right across. And here you can, you can really kind of see now, it's just gonna come off in one big spiral and it's gonna be fabulous. All right, so I've got my very end here. This is where it gets to be too tiny. So I'm just gonna go ahead and snip that off. 
All right, so we just have this teeny little bit of waist. We got enough binding to go around everything we need. I'm gonna go ahead and toss that. I'm gonna press open my seams. Now we're gonna turn this into a double fold bias binding strip. I've got just water in here, but you can use spray starch too. It'll just help it hold its shape once it goes through. It's easiest to get it through when you have an angle like we do here. So we're just going to go ahead and give that point a tug. Then we need to center it. And you can see that it turns it in at the same time that it turns it over, which is fabulous and is gonna save you some headache. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it set up. The first part always takes a tad bit of setup. But once you have it going, it just likes to kind of feed through. So I'm gonna go a little further and then just turn it to the side and press the next bit. All right, I'm gonna keep doing this all the way down to create my bias binding strip. I've got my cute little row of bias binding ready to go. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square up these because sometimes they shift a little when you're going around. So I just wanna make sure I have a nice straight side. All right, there's two ways you can do this. The first way is you can just unfold your binding like this. You can stick this in the center so that way it is even with that fold there. And then you can fold it over the top and do a nice little cute decorative stitch over the top. And it'll cover both your binding and the back, the front and the back evenly. Um, but I don't know about you, I'm not a machine. And so this bias binding isn't super straight throughout the entire roll. So I'm gonna do something that's a little bit more invisible as far as seam options go. So I'm just going to cut myself a little width that is a little bit longer than my pot holder. You can see here, I'm like a little bit in here. So I just want it to be, you know, nice and tidy. So I'm going to unfold my strip and I'm gonna line up the edge of the raw edge, even with the edge of the top of my pot holder here. I'm just gonna give that a little clip and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stitch right down the center of where that fold is. Then I'm gonna be able to fold this over and I can hand stitch it to the other side, which I'm gonna like the results of a lot better. All right, so I'm just stitching right down that fold. And that is just my guide. I'm not really worrying about seam allowances, just going straight down the fold from the eye. All right, we've got a little bit more stay stitching to do and then we're ready to put the binding around the entire bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just line up my pocket, uh, even with the outside. So that way we're gonna see the outside of our gingerbread men and the outside of this all together. And I'm just gonna grab my clips and just go around just to hold it together. We're gonna do the same thing we did at the beginning where we just went around the edges. Uh, just we're gonna also go over that pocket binding as well. I'm gonna go ahead and get my bottoms and sides first and then just throw a couple over here. And do the same thing for the other side as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move that over as far as I can. So that way, again, we're doing that stitch within the seam allowance. We do not want to be able to see this from the front side. I am also, since this is gonna have a little bit more stress, I'm gonna back stitch a little bit over where that pocket is. Now remember, you wanna flip this over and check that you've got all the sides. In this case, I did. You can throw your hand in and also make sure that you don't have any hand holes coming out. But it's starting to look real good at this point. I'm very excited. I'm gonna do up the other side as well, then we're ready to do binding. All right, now we're gonna put binding around. We're gonna go all the way around. Whatever method you did for the first one, you wanna do the same for the second. So if you are just tucking it on the inside and doing a decorative stitch and calling a day, go for it. I'm gonna continue my method of stitching, uh, lining up the edges, stitching right in that fold and going around. I'm going to sew continuous binding. Um, I don't, 
feel like I need a loop on this because I just hang mine over my handle of my oven. But if you wanted to do a loop, you could do that as well. What you would do is you would just start it off like this and you would want to leave a little bit open. And then when you came around to the other side, stitch all the way out to get the loop and then tuck the end of the loop underneath and then go ahead and stitch the rest of the way down. Um, and it'll cover it real nice. But I'm gonna do continuous binding on mine um, and we're gonna get started sewing this around and then we'll be all finished and ready to bake some cookies. All right, so just like continuous binding with a quilt, I'm actually gonna line my binding up about halfway through, but I'm gonna start about six inches down so I get plenty of room to join those edges in the end. I'm gonna stitch forward and back a little bit here so I don't rip that up when I'm getting the continuous binding together later. And then I'm just gonna keep stitching down that fold line, making sure that I'm keeping the edge lined up with the edge of the pot holder. Now this gets, this will fold nice when you go around the edges, but you kind of have to go in little bits. So you can't just swoop around it. I'm just going to line up my edges a little bit. You could pin this if you wanted or clip it, but I'm just doing a teeny little bit at a time, making sure to line up those raw edges so that everything looks really nice and then just work my way around. this next part is the exact same as when you're joining binding for continuous binding on a quilt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my binding until it is about halfway in between and I'm just going to give it a trim. Nice perpendicular. Cross that. All right now what I want to do is I want to line this up so that I'm going to be going two and a half inches past that. So I'm lining up two and a half inches, even with the edge there. Actually, I'm gonna go, since it's bias binding and it's stretchier, I'm actually gonna go to about two and a quarter inches instead, because we wanna make sure that we are not gonna have too much in there. All right, so now I know that I'm gonna extend two and a quarter beyond there. So I want to carefully lift this up, making sure I'm not cutting the one below. I'm gonna cut across there. Now we're going to join this. So we were joining quilt binding, which we haven't had to do yet here. So I'll go over it real quick, just in case you're not a quilter watching this. What you're gonna do is you're going to line them up right sides together with the top one going off to the left and the bottom one just going straight down. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to line up our top corners here. They should be going at a right angle to each other. And I'm going to just stretch that out so that it's going out across like that. And I'm gonna pin that in place. Now I'm going to take, and still pinching those top two corners together, I'm gonna to work my way down to unfold to get my bottom two areas lined up as well. And this pin, I like to go across the diagonal here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew from this corner here down to about where my pin is so that I can join these strips. Then I'll have one continuous strip and you won't be able to tell where I stopped or started. I've kinda of gotta scrunch up this a little bit so that way you can get everything under the sewing machine. It's important to get these super flat so that you're not sewing in a fold or something. All right, now before we trim off those corners, we wanna go ahead and lay this nice and flat, make sure that we're not gonna have any extra bulk there. I'm not, this is looking really good. So now I can go ahead and give this a trim. Just wanna get these ends off here. And now I can go ahead and finish attaching the binding to the oven mat. All right, now this can go ahead and get flipped all the way around to the edge. And here's the great part of the bias binding is it just wants to stay all around there. It is really pretty slick. Uh, it will just hold its shape and have a nice 
tight curve there and so it's gonna look really good. I'm gonna go ahead and put binding clips on just to help hold everything where I want it to be while I stitch this down by hand and then we're ready to use this. So this is why I really like doing this by hand is everything is really thick right here where you've got the two layers for that pocket. And I can really make sure that I'm covering that stitching line and that I'm not gonna be able to see any of that from the back. And so it just is a much neater appearance. I think it looks a lot more professional, actually even better than professional because you know one you buy at the store has not been hand stitched down like this. So, you know, it obviously is gonna take a little bit more time and if you're doing a bunch for gifts, maybe this isn't the most, the best way to do it. But for me, for one that I'm gonna have and use, I'm 100% taking this extra step. All right, so I gave everything a final press and I love how this turned out. It's so cute. I can't wait to bake with it this holiday season. I love making cookies with my daughter and it's just such a fun mother bonding moment. This is just going to be an adorable double oven mitt that can hang over our oven and be decorative as well as functional. And the biggest thing is just to make sure that you're using the proper materials. You don't wanna just do quote batting. You wanna make sure you also have that insole bright so that you're reflecting that heat back and also double layer that with your batting so that way it's nice and um, safe for you and any kiddos that are working with you. But I think this is just so cute. I mean, the fabric combinations are great. That batting or that binding just rolled straight over the edge and I'm really glad that I took the extra time to stitch that down by hand. Now you certainly can do a decorative stitch and just zigzag stitch over the top of that and have some fun. Nothing wrong with that, but for me, for something that I'm gonna be using for years and years to come, I'm really glad I took that extra step. My OCD would kick in every single time I made cookies if I didn't do that and I would have wished I had. So I know that that is the better choice for me. But it's super cute. You can slide your hand in to grab things out of the oven and you are going to be good to go making cookies in style. All right, so just a reminder, we've got kits for this, but also we're starting to get in holiday fabric. So you really just need a half yard of your main fabric, a half yard of your lining, and a fat quarter will get you enough of that bias binding that you need. And then you also need a half yard of the insole bright and a batting, I just use batting scraps. Any quilter is gonna have a ton of that hanging around. Um, but if you get a kit, you'll get everything you need to make this from us. And you can get that over at shop.quiltanatomist.com. Um, it's while supplies last. So I'm not sure how long we'll have this, but as long as we do, you can grab it and you too can have a little gingerbread man double oven mitt that will look fabulous and be super useful. Once again, you can get the pattern for free over on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Just search for double oven mitt or click on the link in the video description down below. All right, make sure you like and subscribe for lots of other great tutorials and tips and tricks. And until next time, happy quilting.